Hi and welcome. This is Homebody Rundown and I'm HR. We are on week seven of Pantry Challenge. Link in the description to the Three Rivers Homestead channel that inspired me to do this. The primary goal of this pantry challenge is to use up the food that we already have in the refrigerator, freezers, and pantry. We eat a mostly vegetarian diet, but just a heads up, I will be cooking some chicken in today's video for youngest child who does eat meat. We are a family of five, but oldest child is off at college, so just feeding four people. The kids homeschool, so we do eat most of our meals at the house. For February, I gave myself a budget of $75 a week for groceries, just trying to buy what we need and not stock up. With only two weeks of pantry challenge left, I combined the budget so I could hopefully get all of my shopping done for February this week. However, there were some good deals at the store, so I bought some items that I won't use until after pantry challenge and did not include those in the budget. Even so, I did end up going over budget a little. I typically do not follow any recipes when I'm cooking, but if I can find something similar online, I will link it in the description. I'm going to cook these sweet potatoes that I bought at Sam's Club, I think two weeks ago. Luckily, they are still looking good. They look pretty clean, but I'm going to give them a quick scrub anyway. These are going to cook in the crock pot, so I don't peel them. I really like this OXO brand vegetable brush. I looked on Amazon to see if they still sell it, and it showed that I had bought this in 2010. So it's held up, but they only have it in green on Amazon now. Cutting off any bad spots to see if the potato is damaged underneath. These are pretty large sized sweet potatoes, but I was able to get them all into the crock pot. Cooking these in the crock pot is something I just tried one day years ago. I do add a little water, but I don't know if that's necessary. Obviously, be careful. There will be a lot of steam when you open the lid. Decided to make some cinnamon butter. This is the jar of cinnamon I keep on the counter, but I refill it with cinnamon I buy at Costco because it's cheaper. This is the spreadable butter I make by mixing olive and avocado oil with butter in the food processor. I do keep it refrigerated, so I've let it sit out on the counter for a few minutes to soften. I'm making this for the sweet potatoes, which we won't eat until tomorrow, so I'm getting this in a small jar for the refrigerator. And then after I got it in the jar, I decided I wanted to sweeten it a little with some brown sugar while it was still soft. The potatoes have been cooking on high for a couple hours and then on low for maybe a couple more. Anyway, I do periodically check them to see if they're soft, and I check every potato because they don't always cook the same depending on where they are in the crock pot and the size of the potato. These are definitely done, so I use tongs to take them out and set them onto a cutting board. I'll cut them in half so they can cool down. These have cooled completely, so I will get them peeled. For the most part, the skins just pull right off, but I do use a very thin metal spoon if there are any spots that are sticking. I also like this spoon to scoop avocados. I don't know what the season is for sweet potatoes, but these tasted awesome, really flavorful this time. I have enough that I'm going to keep one dish out to eat this week and one dish for the freezer. It's the next day and I'm going to cook these plant-based sausages, cut them into bite-sized pieces and got them in this cast iron pan with some olive oil. In a separate frying pan, I'm adding some olive oil and sweet potatoes that cooked in the crock pot yesterday with some salt. Opening this package of goat cheese for a salad to go along with lunch. This expires very soon, but it was still good. 
I just take a minute and use a fork to break up the goat cheese into smaller pieces. This is a butter lettuce blend I picked up four days ago, and it's still mostly good. Just had to pick out a couple pieces. Stirring these sausages, they're getting some really good color and crispiness. I had one tomato left, so dice that up adding black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder mix, and some garlic salt. For the dressing, I'm using the balsamic glaze I made a little over a week ago. Sweet potatoes are warmed through and the veggie sausages look done and here is the finished meal. Added some of the sweetened cinnamon butter. It was a really good combination. I need to refill the gallon size glass jar of white rice that I keep in the pantry. I do buy this in bulk from Costco and keep the extra in these two gallon buckets with gamma seal lids. The buckets are from Azure Standard and I'll link those in the description. I found the easiest way to scoop out the rice is to use my two cup glass measuring cup. It's sturdy and it pours nicely into the funnel. I'm also planning to cook some rice soon, so I'm measuring out two cups of rice for that as well. The Gamma Seal lids are also from Azure Standard. They are a separate purchase from the buckets. I figured I would show this drink. It's one of my favorites and it uses two items that I keep in stock in the pantry. This is tart cherry juice I buy at Walmart and I mix it with Topo Chico Twist of Lime. This is harder to find in my area. Sometimes it's at Costco and sometimes it's in stock at Whole Foods. The bottles are usually different sizes though. Mixing up some French onion dip. We eat this mostly with chips. If I'm making this for other people, I will use sour cream, but if it's just for us, I try to make it a little healthier and use Greek yogurt. I have a Simply Organic brand packet that I picked up at Whole Foods a while ago that I want to use up, and then I have a small amount left in a jar that I bought bulk from Azure, and I'm just going to mix them together. When I use the Greek yogurt, I find it sets up too thick, so I always add at least several tablespoons of milk as well. I didn't measure the yogurt, so I tasted it, and it was a little too salty, so I'm going to add in more yogurt and milk. There are directions on both of these products if you are keen to follow those. I do mix this up several hours before we're going to eat it. Also mixing up some hummus. This is my last jar of tahini, so I will definitely be restocking this at the beginning of next month. This particular one I'm able to get at my local Walmart. I'm going to make a smaller amount this week. We just haven't been going through it quickly. Adding in chickpeas with some of the cooking liquid, lemon juice, roasted garlic powder, toasted sesame oil, salt, and tahini. I do not always add the sesame oil and sometimes I just use regular garlic powder or actual roasted garlic. I think even though I knew I was adding less chickpeas, I still added all the same amounts of liquids, so this is pretty thin. It should set up more in the refrigerator, but if not, I can always add more chickpeas to thicken it. This Cabot Creamery Pepper Jack Cheese has been in the refrigerator since probably December. I think I buy this one at Sam's Club. It is Best Buy next month, and I'm all out of sharp cheddar cheese, so I'm going to shred this up today. I use the medium size shredding blade on my food processor to do this, and it works really well. It's very speedy. This is a two pound block of cheese, so it makes a lot of shredded cheese. 
I'm going to freeze three sandwich size Rubbermaid containers and keep out one larger one to use this week. I do label these for the freezer because I can't always tell one cheese from the other. Had vanilla animal crackers left over from our overnight trip to Chicago, so I wanted to get those in a jar, and I am not doing great lately in picking the right size jar. But at least I have a dishwasher. Also got out two different kinds of crackers this weekend. Pantry Challenge has taught me that I should not buy extra Triscuits. We just cannot get through them easily before they expire. Went into Walmart today because we were out of bread and almost out of sour cream. This is Daisy brand, one pound for $2.48. Two boxes of corn brand meatless chicken nuggets, $3.98 each, and brown berry organic bread. 27 ounces for $5.48 for a total of $15.92. Making that white rice for dinner tonight, I always have to take an extra minute to get the rice unstuck from around the edges of this strainer. I always cook rice in the Instant Pot. It's very easy and does a good job. It also doesn't take very long for white rice. Brown rice is another story. I don't know if it's as good as a rice cooker. I've never used one of those. Using several items from the freezer to make fajitas for dinner, this is a vegetarian meat product called Beyond Steak. The three pepper blend is from Whole Foods and the corn is from Costco. I don't have any taco seasoning, so grabbed out a multitude of spices because I will season each of the frozen items. I'll also use some of this red sofrito sauce from Sky Valley. I like to add spices to a bowl rather than hold the bottles over the pans. I just don't like moisture to get into the spice jars. I also added some dried parsley to the corn. That's the green that you see. Using almost all the spices to season the peppers, also salt. The vegetarian fajita meat I will keep more simple with just cumin, smoked paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, and salt. I forgot that earlier today when I shredded the cheese, I used that cutting board and sliced up a white onion. So I'm going to get this in with the peppers and turn the heat up a little more. This is the sofrito sauce. I also added some lime juice to the pepper and onion mix and also the corn. We typically add this all to a tortilla, but I decided to just have a rice bowl tonight. Noticed uh, the jar of green olives in the refrigerator, so I sliced up some of those. This was a really delicious dinner. I need to refill the sugar dispenser, and thankfully, I'm not out of sugar yet. This is all I have left. I really like these storage containers from Rubbermaid. This says, Serve and Saver. I think these are pretty old school, like from Kmart 20 years ago. I looked online, and I found something that looks similar in Amazon. I'll link it, but I don't know if it's nearly as nice as these are. They've just held up really well, and they're very lightweight and the lids are easy on and off. I also like this sugar dispenser, but I have to really verify that the lid is on. Open new bottles of olive oil and avocado oil so I could refill the bottles that I keep out on the counter. Well, I don't refill them, my husband does. He's able to do it without a funnel, which I have never managed to do without making a mess. I also ran out of instant decaf coffee I was not prepared when it came to coffee and tea for this pantry challenge. Hopefully I can get some more this week, but I don't know if there'll be any room in the budget. Also opened a new peanut butter. We have crunchy and smooth, but this smooth peanut butter is coming up on its best by date in a few months, and I have two of these. I don't like to just drink 
reconstituted powdered milk, but I thought maybe it would be fine to use it for some coffee creamer. This is whole milk and I'm going to add powdered sugar and some fourfold vanilla extract. This ended up being okay. I could still taste the powdered milk flavor a little, even in coffee. So this is good to do in a pinch, but I'll just stick with cream or regular milk if I have it. Lots of kitchen refilling tasks today. I need to refill the gallon jar of quick oats that I keep out on a shelf in the kitchen. I eat oatmeal probably four or five times a week, so I do get through it pretty quickly. I keep the bulk oatmeal that I buy in these five gallon buckets with gamma seal lids so they're easier to open. And just like the bulk rice, I like to scoop the oatmeal with a glass two cup measuring cup. I have two of them. One is from Pyrex and one is Anchor Hawking. This is the last bag of frozen fruit in the house. We ran out of blueberries again a couple days ago. Blueberries are by far more popular in our house, but beggars can't be choosers. I like to keep these in a tall lock and lock brand container. I will link it in the description. It's a good size for my freezer, but there are no indentations or grips on the sides, so it can be very slippery, so just be aware. The entire bag doesn't quite fit in this container, but that's fine because I'm going to put some in a bowl to defrost and use on pancakes. For dinner tonight, I'm going to make tuna noodle casserole. I don't follow a recipe for this, so it's a little different probably every time. These are some of the flavors I'll add, and this is the tuna I'll use. It's from Whole Foods Market. Going to make a roux with olive oil and butter, and this is an Edwards and Sons not chicken bouillon cube. It's vegetarian. Mixing in some flour and we'll let that cook for a minute. This is the whole milk that I mixed up from a powder, just adding a little bit at a time and whisking that in. Adding in seasonings like garlic powder, black pepper, onion powder, more milk and mushroom broth, and just remember the ground mustard. It needs more flavor, so I'm adding this mushroom umami seasoning blend from Trader Joe's. If this was just for my husband and I, I would probably add onions and red pepper flakes, but the one kid that will eat this doesn't care for too much of that stuff. Putting in frozen peas and cooking the egg noodles. Making a topping for the casserole with some breadcrumbs and panko breadcrumbs, roasted garlic powder, nutritional yeast, salt, and the black pepper garlic onion powder blend. Also grated Parmesan cheese and some dried parsley. This is way too much parsley. Adding in the two cans of tuna and Parmesan cheese, nutritional yeast, gave it a taste and it was claggy. I feel like that's a word I got from Great British Bake Off. Anyway, I added some lemon juice and that helped. Adding on the topping, we'll bake in the oven for just 10 minutes or so. I got an oven thermometer and it's reading pretty accurate right now. Realized right after I put it in that I forgot to add fat to the topping, and I'm afraid all that dried parsley is going to burn, so I'm spraying it with a little avocado oil and added some olive oil. I did turn on the broiler for the last couple minutes. This was very good. Finally drove to the big box stores and Whole Foods to do some grocery shopping. Went into Whole Foods markets for a few basics. This is the Store Brand 365 Organic Chopped Spinach. Got two bags. They are $3.29 each. 
I picked up several varieties of Beyond Meat products because they were about half off and that's a really good deal. But I won't be using these in February, so I'm not including it in my $75 budget. Only showing one carton here, but I picked up two Organic Valley Free Range 18 count large brown eggs. They raised the price on these. They are now $8.49 each. I think they were $7.99. $3.65 organic all-purpose flour, $5.49 for five pounds. I already took these out of the packaging. Whole Foods brand organic rainbow bell peppers, $6.99. It was mostly orange peppers in this bag. Vanilla coffee, $8.29 for 12 ounces. Total for Whole Foods was $44.33. Next is Sam's Club, Cuties brand seedless California mandarins, 5 pounds, produce of USA, $7.26. Zespri brand Sun Gold Kiwis, product of Italy, two pounds, seven dollars, twelve cents. Members Mark Pulp Free Orange Juice, product of USA and Brazil, two pack for five dollars and seventy eight cents. Organic Fuji Apples, five pounds, six dollars and fifty six cents. Members Mark Wavy Potato Chips, one pound, two dollars, ninety-eight cents. Total for Sam's Club was twenty-nine dollars, seventy cents. Costco now. This was a pricey purchase with a limited budget, but Youngest Child does not really like chicken nuggets anymore, so I picked up store brand organic chicken tenderloins. These are boneless and skinless. $5.99 a pound for a total of $30.55. Picked up these chocolate caramels. They are so good, but they are not in the budget. So we will not open these until March, hopefully. Snacking cucumbers, product of Canada, $5.99. Another item that was on sale, so I picked it up, but we won't use it this month. Bye Bye Go or BB Go Vegetable Spring Rolls. Two pounds, four earth brand, organic Brussels sprouts, We bought three bags of Kirkland organic blueberries, but one is already opened, and I'm only going to count two of these for my budget. Three pound bags for $7.99 each, product of Chile. Earthbound Farms organic fresh spinach, $4.89. Bought two Kirkland organic lactose-free 2% milks. These boxes contain three half-gallon cartons. I'm only counting one of these for the budget, $11.99 each box. Half-gallon Horizon organic heavy whipping cream, $13.49. One point seven five pound bag of late July organic multi grain tortilla chips, seven dollars ninety nine cents. Total for Costco for the stuff I am counting was ninety seven dollars and thirty seven cents. Going to cook all the chicken. If you do not want to see raw chicken, you will want to skip ahead about thirty seconds. Sprayed it with avocado oil and seasoned with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. I don't cook a lot of meat anymore, so I do check the temperature on this just to make sure. Divvying this up and we'll put all but one in the freezer. Youngest child said this was really good chicken. 
a few items from a smaller local grocery store called Martin's. Dave's Killer Plain Awesome Bagels. This is a five pack for $5.89. 14 ounce bag Bob's Red Mill baking powder, $4.59. And one and a half quarts of Breyers chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, $7.39 for a total of $17.87. I'm going to make pancakes this morning, but before I do that, I'm going to make some whipped cream to put on the pancakes. And I also put it in my coffee sometimes. This is just heavy whipping cream vanilla, and powdered sugar. I like to mix it in my KitchenAid mixer with the whisk attachment. I do keep a pretty close eye on it so it doesn't get over whipped or too thick. No recipe on this, but I do taste it before it finishes mixing in case it needs more sugar or vanilla. Now I'm going to make pancakes and I am not going to wash the bowl or the whisk because it doesn't matter to me. The last two times I've made pancakes, they have been so flat, just really thin. I think the first time I had used buttermilk that I had mixed up, so I thought maybe it was that, but after the second time I started to wonder if I maybe put baking soda into the baking powder jar. I'm still not sure, but just in case, I went to the store this morning and bought that new baking powder. This batter ended up being extra thick. I think because I used the whole milk I had mixed up and I did not add maple syrup, which I usually do. Melting butter in the cast iron pans and adding the batter. You can see here, how thick it is. But these puffed up so much more. They were so fluffy. I, there had to be something about the baking powder. Here's my system. I take them out of the pan and put them on a cooling rack. And you can really see here just how fluffy these were. And they tasted awesome, even without the maple syrup. I think the whole milk made them a lot richer in flavor. Last shopping, hopefully for this week and next week, went to Walmart. This is Chobani Nonfat Greek Yogurt, 558 for 32 ounces. 12 ounces organic petite baby carrots, $1.96. And 32 and a half ounce box of Quaker Cinnamon Life cereal, $5.98. Total for these three was $13.52. opened up the last box of Beyond Breakfast Sausage from the freezer to go with pancakes this morning. This is the pan I used to cook the sausages and now I'm going to saute some onions adding a little avocado oil and this is my last onion. These are red lentils. They're very small so they cook really quickly. I'm going to add one Edwards and Sons Not Chicken Bouillon Cube for some flavor. I'll be adding these to a rice casserole that I'm making with leftovers. I'm going to call it an enchilada casserole. It is the leftover fajita fillings, which are rice, sauteed corn, onions and peppers, and vegetarian steak. Also adding leftover corn and diced up a few pepper slices that were left in the refrigerator. For more flavor, I will add enchilada sauce from the pantry, some smoked paprika and chipotle powder, and I'll finish up this Sky Valley red sofrito sauce. Also using up what's left of a non-fat Greek yogurt container. Had just a couple tablespoons of this salsa left, so emptied that in here as well. This is the last of the goat cheese I opened this week. 
and part of the shredded pepper jack cheese that I had left over, more enchilada sauce, the sauteed onions, and the cooked lentils. This is very orange. So I added some parsley for color, generously sprayed the pan with avocado oil, added the rest of the enchilada sauce. I'll cover this with an aluminum foil top and bake it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes, mostly to let the cheeses melt. Took it out of the oven and removed the foil, so now I'm going to add the rest of the pepper jack cheese and some sliced green olives. We'll put it back in the oven for a few more minutes and then turn on the broiler for the last couple minutes. It was a really nice treat to have something with this much cheese, but it could have used a little acid like lime juice or tomatoes. By far the most challenging thing about Pantry Challenge this week was having a budget. I combined my $75 budget for this week and next week, which gave me $150. And I had $43.13 that I didn't spend the previous week for a total budget of $193.13. I ended up spending $218.71, so I went over budget by about $26. And I've mentioned it before, but this does not include eating out or picking up special foods for when the kids have friends over. Thanks for watching.